Well, welcome back to the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And here's the new uh, conversation that we're having right now. It's about the retirement age for teachers. It would soon be amended from 60 to 65 years old or years of service extended from 35 to 40, whichever comes first. This is according to the new harmonized retirement age for Teachers Bill 2021. The bill also introduces budgetary award, special rural posting allowances, science teachers allowances and other measures to motivate teachers and attract the best minds to the teaching profession. Joining us this morning is public affairs expert and commentator Philip Obwesi. Good morning, Sam. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. Good morning, dear. How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you? You are great also. Give all the glory to all my people. Now, what I really, I, I really wish to ask is how are teachers this morning? How are they taking the news? And how about you? How did you see this development? Well, um, I would say right away that uh, any effort, any attempt, any action activity of government policy that is designed to better the lot of the Nigerian teacher is a welcome development. Uh, I will always commend any uh, policy direction that is designed to uh, enhance uh, the condition of service of the uh, Nigerian teacher. Uh, so to that extent, I appreciate and commend the new policy. Uh, but beyond that, any commendation for such a policy because uh, our officials are, are, are actually left out uh, from uh, from uh, 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 development from governance. They actually left out. But beyond the commendation, I think the government has not shown that uh, presence of mind. Uh, with respect to policy formulation to better the lot of government of the teachers. Why do I say so? You see, uh, what I see here, I salute it. It's still an effort. It's an effort in the right direction. I salute it and I commend it. Okay. But I see it as ragtag, a kind of effort to mend something. This is not a uh, uh, a policy that is wholesome, that is all encompassing, mm -hmm. that will once and for all, or to a very large extent, address the challenges of the teaching profession in Nigeria. So we continue to come up with this, 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 uh, this palliative measure for the teaching profession, not just the teaching profession, but any of the other sectors. But we continue to come up with palliative that tend to help ameliorate and not resolve in tangible and measurable terms what the issues are. Mm. What, what, what I, would I you have, say? Yes, go on. Yeah, I, know, I just want to ask, you know, since you brought that up, you know, what would you say are the major issues um, in the teaching profession in Nigeria that are left out here? Um, well, I have not seen the bill. Uh, I have not seen the bill, it's not yet in the public domain, so I cannot talk about the contents of it. But you see, the challenge of the teaching profession for myself, one of uh, the, the core challenge is that we have so downgraded and belittled it and upgraded politics. We've downgraded the teaching profession. We've made it, we've made it to be. Uh, unattractive. You know, it is not something that people would want to go into as a form of career. People now go into the teaching profession because they have no other option. And we have deliberately, intentionally upgraded politics until we make the teaching profession uh, a symbol of uh, a pride, a thing of pride. Uh, by increasing uh, uh, the attractiveness of it uh, and uh, making it worth the while for those who are within the sector, uh, we may not be able to, 
all these are palliative. And it's a little because they stay, as it is normally said, around this, this side that uh, half bread is better than none. Uh, it is good that something is being done. It is good that government is thinking in that direction. But I see it as a palliative measure. All right. I, I'm, you know, I, I was hoping you know, that we'll be able to establish some of the major challenges you know, and figure out ways that we can make teaching a, a thing of pride uh, here in Nigeria. Um, one of the challenges, well, I believe, would be a salary issue, maybe a you know, re remuneration uh, issue. I, I don't know if that also comes into play. Um, but I remember sometime late last year, there was also discussions of bills to improve on the salaries of teachers in Nigeria. Um, so don't you, you, do you think that might also help? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it is not all about salary. It is, yes, I agree. But it is not all about salary increase. There's been repeated increase in salary across board for so many at different times. And even, but it, this whole thing is not about salary. It is about uh, having a, 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 a more than compassionate old map. For the teaching profession, if someone look at look at the security situation in, in school, look at the state of the schools themselves. Would I want to sit down in that confine, in that kind of atmosphere, and call it my my, my profession, my career? Take each of these schools, for example. So beyond the salary, the conditions of study, the general atmosphere, the general environment of their condition of service, even if the salary is not too buoyant, it should be anyway, but even let the, con the, 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 the condition of service, the workplace, I mean the work environment, it is not desirable. Some of these schools, a teacher sits on a, 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 a desk and table, a desk, a, 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 a wooden desk and table, and that is the work environment. Some, some, some staff rooms, uh, are like poultry, I mean, poultry setting with so many teachers uh, confined into a particular environment or sitting on a desk and table. There is nothing, nothing to suggest that that is an office. Uh, you, you, mean, you, you understand me? So, the young people, yes, yes, there is the, but salary is not just the issue. It is the condition of service, the security of service. See, if you become if you become a politician today, if you are made a member, a, a house, a, 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 a local government chairman, a state governor, a senator, a house of rep member, a president, within a very short time, your lifestyle changes. But if you become a teacher today, if you go into the teaching profession today, I, I, I think your lifestyle has to diminish. Because the system takes from you and does not give you any kind of uh, comfort, any kind of luxury. You need to visit some of these schools and see, we see the pictures of the classroom. If the classrooms themselves are like that, then you can imagine the condition of the teaching activity. So it's beyond salary, that's my argument. Right. It's about the security of study, the condition of study, the condition of the work environment, the workspace that these people are. Uh, that, that they are forced to work in because they have no option. So it's beyond this makeshift uh, palliative measures and things like that. We should sit down. We have men and women with capacity, with intelligence and the experience to, to remodel and rejig the, 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 the educational sector, especially with special attention to the teaching profession, to come up with something that is wholesome, Something that that is all encompassing that will guarantee uh, a pride of place for teachers within the society. For now, no teacher comes around in a social gathering and parades himself as a teacher. What will he do for it? He has nothing to show for it. It is not. You see, when you are a military man, even though you are not rich, but the fact that you are a military man, you are chairing in, in a public gathering, in a social gathering, there is a pride attached to that profession, the army, the navy. You see how the naval personnel look like? Quality people, quality uniform, quality, I mean, the teaching All profession right. deserves more. Mr. Uwezi, there's a saying in Nigeria, and generally, in fact, that it's not how far, but how well. 
And the government now is saying that uh, the essence of this is to motivate teachers and attract people into the teaching profession. But if there are other issues regarding teaching, the salary issue that you've said, it's not about salary, teachers' welfare, and right now that we're in the middle of a pandemic, talking about providing hygiene facilities for the teachers and the students, all these issues you know, still abound. So are you, don't you think it's way better for the government to focus on you know, the system right now not, not lengthening their stay in service? Would you say lengthening the retirement age is a, is, a, is a motivation for them to keep doing their jobs or the quality of their time while in service? So, speaking, I see no purpose that lengthening their stay in service in achieve. A few of them talk about that because they are afraid of going into retirement uh, or, or, or because they, they will actually be going empty handed. So they want to say more. Those of them that make, I mean, the teachers that make such arguments, because I can't find any, any, any the impact of such, the positive impact of, uh, of such policy to lengthen their, their, their stay in service. At 35 years of service, you, uh, uh, you should uh, be going on retirement. It should not be by war policy. The person, somebody who has put in 35 years of active service in the teaching profession, I can't see what other service, uh, what other thing that is left to him to give to the student. But beyond that, especially I can't see what focus that's going to achieve, except to part of the back those who are here because they don't want to go back into, 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 into the society and be handed. That's, that's why they make those arguments. It's not because they intend to achieve anything. So beyond that, beyond that, my problem is that government is encumbered with so many things. Government is entangled with so many activities. I wonder what the federal government is doing with all, all, all the stuff they encumbered themselves with. At the end, government does not have time to sit down for the priority. Government does not have time to concentrate on the fundamental policy, on fundamental policy that will change the life of Nigerians because they have, the federal government have been combat themselves with so much. So daily they, are, they have so much to do. They, are, they, they, have, they don't have so much to do. If not, if government sits down and gives attention to the issue of fishing, the challenge will be resolved. The challenge is not about increasing salary or lengthening the years of service. It is about the entirety of their welfare which includes the, the school itself, the school building itself, the security. Look, people can walk into any school and pick kids and pick teachers. Nothing will happen. Because we can't provide security for them. Why can't we provide security for them? Because we don't have sufficient security personnel. Why don't we have sufficient security personnel? Because those young people who should go into that sector are out of the sector because we don't attract it to them. So government needs to see that it's not these political political solutions that they are coming up with. Government really, government really needs to sit down to think through each sector. That brings me about brings me to the point of so more government having to contend with so much policy. At the end, when they sit down at the federal executive council, there are so many things for them to consider. So many things that they just they just they just. Uh, go through some of these uh, documents without having time to look at them. There is no time. They don't have time. You get, get to the police station. Because of our population and the paucity of police personnel and paucity of police stations, the police have so much to do. They have so much trouble in the society and you know, people quarreling and so many contentions that the police don't, don't have time for policing. The same with our leaders. They don't have time for leadership. There are so many issues. Hmm. All right, because we are not organized. So my point is this. I celebrate and appreciate this little effort. There is an evil adage that says that when you salute a warrior for which victory is already won, yes, the boy should do more to win more victory for us. So I salute the government for this little measure, but I think the government just needs to sit down and think through this thing. Increasing salary or deploy, uh, providing budget for those that we teach in community areas does not resolve the challenge of the teaching profession. Okay. Um.
the teaching profession is a job. If I go to my office, I need to sit down in a conducive environment. There are very few schools, except the uh, private schools, very few schools, except some of the model schools that current governors are building for political purposes. Except for that, the majority of our schools lack every form of infrastructure. Mr. Abu, we will we'll get to talk about um, better infrastructure and better investments in education, because um, I believe that's you know where all of this is centered around some of the things that you've mentioned. You know, if, if we invest more in education facilities, both on the federal and state level and in the local government level, we probably would have a better envi working environment for you know teachers and make it you know more of an honourable job. But I want you to paint a picture, the you know clearest picture possible of the fears of a Nigerian teacher as he or she approaches retirement. People who have spent 30, 35 years at service um, and are about to, be, you know, be, to retire, what are their biggest fears at that time? And why will the extension to 40 years either be a thing of joy or maybe frustration for them? Mr. Boise, I think we'll reconnect with you and you know, get you in to share your thoughts on that. It's, it's the thing that I had mentioned um, earlier about the fears of you know, a Nigerian civil servant. And it's not just the teachers now, but you know, most Nigerian civil servants, you know, lecturers in universities, um, maybe doctors might have a different story, you know, but teachers, um, police officers, and, and the likes. Uh, welcome back, sir. Can you hear us? Hello. Mr. Boise, can you hear us clearly? I can hear you now, thank you. Okay, brilliant. So let's go, go ahead and have you speak on the fears of uh, the Nigerian teacher as he or she approaches retirement. Yes, uh, their fears are hinged on several fundamentals. The fact that I, I, I was discussing, uh, I had a chance meeting with one of them, and uh, he was lamenting that uh, in the next few years or the other, but he will be retiring but that he's not been able to build a house for himself. That was his whole specific challenge here. And uh, he's now desperately looking for me to have his time extended. Now, I, I, I told him that it is a difficult what he has not achieved in the last 33 years. For you to be able to achieve it in two years. But you now, Decide to uh, find me of uh, making up for the lost time. And when you see people like this, they are willing, now willing and ready to do anything so as not to get into the society empty handed. So it is the fear of the future. If they could not earn while they were strong, while they were young and agile, they are now afraid how much more now that I have become old. Now you see an elderly man trying to appease people who visit his office because he wants to make money in time for his retirement. These are the fears that they have. The fear of the unknown, considering that the Nigerian state, the Nigerian economy presently is not very buoyant. And you can't blame the government and solely for the state of affairs in our economy. So many factors are responsible. We depend entirely on crude oil, and crude oil has not done so much, especially in, this, in the time of this administration. So the fears have to do with the unknown. They want to go into the society where they will not have students or children paying for, 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 for classes and things like that. And now they have to live on their own and they have not saved up. That is the essence of the education for increasing the length of stay as teachers. But I want to encourage the teachers. Some of us that are in the civil society sector, we have been helping, pushing, and calling on the government to do more for the, uh, for the teachers. But it is beyond increasing salaries. It's just for the teachers to be more creative and innovative. Uh, in, in terms of any income generation, uh, if a teacher is able to save poultry sums, he might be able to go into poultry farming and things like that and be able to earn an income. Uh, a lot of uh, NGO, a lot of uh, uh, microfinance banks are giving loans for teachers and hospitals uh, to establish SMEs for them to 
depends on. If these teachers are able to take benefit of some of these uh, small scale businesses that are out there, I think this fear of your norm will be eliminated. Hmm. Well, that the, fear of your norm is the challenge for our teachers. The burden is different for you know each individual individual teacher. Some of them might be able to save and you know get into so uh, you know those. Uh, uh, microfinance bank uh, programs, like you mentioned, some may have a different story because they have uh, kids to take care of, house rents to pay, and um, it's just it's a different story, you know, generally for each person, um, you know. And earlier I had mentioned, you know, the these same fears, you know, for Nigerian teachers and Nigerian civil servants. Um, after all that time in service, there's really not much that you can look back and say, oh, you've achieved. And you know, one, um, more, one more fear, like really, just yesterday, teachers in Oshun State were protesting the non-payment of, of, of their pension and gratuity. So maybe this is another reason why yeah. they're happy to stay five I more years in yes, service. Thank because you very much. They, you know, they, they keep being... When the government started moving the idea of borrowing from the pension fund, then <laughs> 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 will the government... Pay the international debts before taking off. The fears are genuine. Do you, do you, do you think? Do you think? Um, I know that the government will borrow, whether I protest or not. The government is going to borrow from the pension fund, and they are going to borrow from the pension fund. And when the time comes for my pension to be paid, it's not going to pay. Yeah. Final question. You've got it here. It's so uh, sad final that question, this is Mr. Abuesi. Uh, do you, uh, you know, think that maybe we should have, you know, laws that make uh, health insurance and free education for Nigerian teachers' uh, families? Uh, would would that maybe also assist in making their lives easier? Nigeria, Nigeria state. I'm a lawyer, uh, and I know that the Nigeria state has too many laws that are covered nationally as well. The challenge is that because of the kind of people we have as mentors or mm -hmm. leaders, uh, the people, the Nigerian citizens, have become creative in invading and dodging and circumventing laws. Mm -hmm. If you like this, I have seen Nigerians circumvent laws. Our politicians, our leaders, those that are taken to court, they are just too good. Laws. So it is not about laws. They can right. keep on making more laws and more laws. And you need to see the police, police officers that convent laws. You need to see different politicians, people brought to court. You need to see them that convent laws. We are just too creative in that regard. So it is not about laws. There are so many laws. If that if the government or our leaders have the sincerity of purpose to implement them. It's something is that there is this lack of willingness to yes. implement right. them. What Thank I you. A political implementation of our law. Thank if you so we much. Mr. the political Mr. implementation of our law, the teachers will have a good time in their chosen mm -hmm. professional teachers. So it is not about law. I do not agree it's about law. Yes, there are it's so about many political laws. will. Law covering everything. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Philip Obwesi, for your time on The Breakfast this morning. This is a very important issue. I mean, imagine not being paid your contributory pension since 2016. It's madness. You can imagine that person wishing it was during his time the extended service, you know, so he can keep earning salaries. That's even if the government pays. Yes. Mr. Anyway. Obwesi, thank you so much for speaking with us and for your time this morning. Have a great day. All right. All right, um, we're moving now on uh, to talk um, a little bit of entertainment. If El Mai should be joining us in a few seconds. And uh, we, we will be wrapping up, you know, with that quick co uh, conversation this morning uh, here on The Breakfast. Thank you so much for staying with us so far. Don't go anywhere.